Hello and welcome to OnLogic Live. My name is Derek Fanton and I'm the communications manager here at OnLogic. I'm pleased to be joined today by product development manager, JP Ishak. Hi everyone. And we are so excited to be coming to you today to talk about the new Helix series of industrial computers. So just so there's no mystery, while it may look like JP and I are in uh, separate uh, corners of the same room, that's not entirely true. We are both coming to you from our headquarters here in Burlington, Vermont, but to ensure social distancing, we are in different areas of the building. I assume that's just because JP didn't want to spend any length of time in the same room with me, but I, I will let that slide for now. Can confirm. Oh, good. Oh, good. So now we know. Okay, at least we're all on the same page. Um, so we have a few questions that I wanted to post to JP that we've collected over the last couple of weeks of the Helix series being live. But I want to invite you as well as if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, if you have any questions about Helix, please drop those in the chat and we'd love to try and get to those. Uh, our intrepid producer, Sarah, will pass those on to me towards the end of our time together today. You can also join the conversation on Twitter by using the hashtag OnLogicLive. So set the stage for us, JP. Um, tell us a little bit about the Helix series. Happy to. And thank you, Derek, and thank you, everyone, for, for joining us today. So at OnLogic, we've been designing and manufacturing industrial and rugged PCs for the last 17 years. This was an opportunity for us to debut a new design language and a new way of thinking about our products. We're launching this series with two systems, uh, both of which you can actually see uh, beside Derek there. The HX500, which is fully fanless and is focused really on compact performance density, and then the uh, larger hybrid-cooled HX600, which is centered around expandability and flexibility. Now, both of these systems uh, feature the latest Intel 10th generation processors, uh, triple independent display. Uh, they support up to 64 gigs of RAM, dual SSDs. Uh, and then the HX600 is notable in that it also offers support for graphics cards or other expansion devices. And as I mentioned, the uh, 10th generation Intel processors, they both support up to an i9. Nice. And to your point, these are just the first two systems in the planned Helix series, correct? Yeah, that, that's right. We're already planning some exciting things for the future of Helix. Awesome. Uh, so you mentioned up to i9 processing. I know that the 10th generation Intel chips were a really big design decision for Helix. Um, can you talk about why it was so important for us to use those new 10th generation chips in this series? Sure. You know, uh, in the industrial computing space, it's not uncommon to see systems that lag one or even more generations behind the latest processor generation. For Helix, we worked closely with Intel to launch these systems with the newest 10th gen architecture built right in, giving them a fresh CPU life cycle. These processors offer significant performance improvement over the previous generation, including up to 10 cores on some models. Great. So it sounds like there's going to be plenty of flexibility there from a processing standpoint. One thing that struck me when I first, you know, saw Helix started to make its debut in development was just how small the HX500 is. Was there any need to make any sort of compromises in the design process in order to accommodate that small size? Frankly, not really. Uh, our team worked really hard to ensure a thermal solution that was efficient, simple, cost effective for these systems. Because the core system is cooled passively without any fans or moving parts, uh, that does provide a challenge, but that challenge is on Logic's specialty. The cooling ability of the system is proportionate to the surface area of the heatsink, so you wouldn't be able to drop, say, an enthusiast-grade GPU into the system, but that's not really the target market for these devices. Uh, and even given the HX500's small footprint, as you called out, uh, it can still run desktop processors and is not limited to the mobile CPUs that you often see in smaller form factor systems. And even with that, it still maintains a 0 to 50 degrees Celsius operating temperature range. Oh, very cool. Very cool. <laughs> Indeed it is, Derek. Oh boy. Okay. I walked right into that one. Uh, all right. So in addition to the CPU, um, can you talk a little bit more about what separates Helix both from our own product line and from the various other systems that are available out there on the market? Absolutely. You know, we're frequently asked for more performance and features in a smaller and smaller package. And with Helix, we wanted to take all that market knowledge and all our expertise and wrap it into this new platform. Um, and with that in mind, we've incorporated features like uh, wide input power with uh, over voltage protection, uh, the dual speed M.2 drives with RAID capability. And of course, for the HX600, as I mentioned, we did want to offer a, uh, an industrial computer that had graphics card options and specifically one that we could keep as low profile as possible and also still preserve the solid state reliability of the main system. Gotcha. So that's sort of where that kind of hybrid cooling language comes in as it relates to the HX600. Exactly. So the HX600 expansion bay can accommodate fan cooled cards or GPUs, but the motherboard itself remains in a separate passively cooled chamber. Gotcha. Gotcha. So getting back quickly to that need for additional compute that you talked about as it relates to the GPUs, um, I know that you know the Helix series has been in development for a while. Can you talk a little bit about um, why a system like this right now? Mm, absolutely. 
I mean, there's no question that our world has changed dramatically in the past few months. We're all facing new unprecedented challenges, and that extends to the needs of those looking to build solutions to those challenges. You know, edge computing is already revolutionizing industries like mass transit, retail analytics, energy infrastructure, and manufacturing, just to name a few. And now we're seeing even more need in all those fields, not to mention other industries and, and sectors like the medical, food service, and education. With Industry 4.0, we're seeing a rising need for automation, and it's only accelerating. And these innovations are more and more frequently being built outside the temperature-controlled office environment and subject to conditions that would normally destroy more traditional hardware. It makes complete sense. Can you drill down at all on that? Are there particular applications or use cases that you can talk about specifically? Sure. I mean, I could see Helix being used as workstations, remotely deployed machine vision or machine learning solutions. Uh, they might be installed in a ceiling or a medical cart or even under a workbench in a factory. Uh, you know, really anywhere with a challenging environment that still needs that advanced computing uh, and an application where reliability of the system is essential. You know, we have a growing number of customers in the medical space, in manufacturing and logistics. All of them can benefit from the Helix series combination of cutting edge performance, connectivity and reliability. And are there any projects currently uh, in process using Helix? Uh, there's been a lot of early interest in Helix, but one that I'm really excited to discuss is a project that we've been working on with the teams at Amazon Web Services and ThingLogix called WorkWatch. Uh, and this solution provides temperature monitoring and tracing, and it also features daily self-screenings that can be sent out to employees or students, for example, via text or email. It's really designed to help people get back to work and back to school. And they use Helix for data collection and the user interface control paired with Amazon Web Services for data handling and analytics. Awesome. So that seems like a really timely example uh, of the importance of having that kind of interconnected network of partners that can make these solutions possible uh, really quickly. Absolutely. We try to be more than just a hardware provider. Uh, with today's technology solutions, it's really about connecting the dots between the hardware, the software, and the application. And that's really the role we play. Awesome. I, I mean, I know from my own perspective, I'm really excited to see what people are building using Helix. Uh, and to that point, if anybody out there who's watching is thinking about working on a project or is working on a project using Helix, we'd love to hear about it. Uh, we love talking about what our customers are building and, and we'd love to sort of highlight those use cases. Um, and speaking of reaching out to us, uh, it makes sense, I think, at this point, let's transition to some questions. Again, we've had some things that have come in uh, over the last couple of weeks that I'm going to hit JP with, but Sarah's also going to be sending me a few things uh, if there are questions coming in in the chat, and I can go ahead and pass those on to JP. So um, while we get started here, JP, talk a little bit about what goes into choosing what features go into a system like Helix. Oh, that, I mean, that's a great question. Um, OnLogic takes a very market-driven approach to system design and development. Uh, what I mean by that is that we listen very carefully to the voice of the customer, both the projects we win and the occasional opportunity that, that passes us by. Um, and that really informs everything from the performance to the size to the specific I.O. that we design in. And our team kind of digests that information, keeps an eye on not just that feedback that we get, but also uh, beyond today's market, what the market's going to need two, three, or even more years down the line. Our customers frequently need a long life cycle solution that they can really rely on to be consistent and relevant for years. And OnLogic provides that peace of mind. Awesome. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I know that having that conversation is really important in terms of figuring out what the clients need and then putting that into the system. And I, it seems like Helix is a great example of that. Um, so getting some things over. First, I want to say thank you to Rob, who says the products look great. Thanks, Rob. We appreciate that. Um, and then there's a question here about, um, is OnLogic open to partnerships with software vendors? Oh, I mean, the, the short answer to that is absolutely. You know, we mentioned uh, Amazon Web Services. We mentioned ThingLogix. I mean, we're always open to uh, exploring opportunities with the right fit solutions to really get the market what, what it needs. You know, our products are not just about the technology, but about how they fit into the ecosystem. Awesome. Yeah, I know we have some exciting things on, on the docket right now with some partners that we're working with. Uh, I can't wait to see who else uh, we work with in the future to build these solutions out. Uh, so let's see other things coming through. Um, somebody apparently has an in-vehicle application. They were asking whether Helix would be a good fit for something like that. Well, I always want to learn more about in-vehicle applications, uh, for one thing. Um, but, but to answer the question, uh, as I think I mentioned previously, Helix has an operating temperature range of 0 to 50 degrees Celsius. While that's pretty standard and even actually goes a little beyond what we typically see for an industrial PC, for an in-vehicle application, we would generally recommend something from our rugged line like our carbon series. Uh, those systems include additional protections against things like shock and vibration. You know, Think of a rail application or a bus where it's hitting potholes and needs to be protected against that, that vibration. 
situation. Um, and they often need to operate in environments that range from my, you know, down to negative 40 Celsius all the way up to 70 Celsius. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in that vein, I know that a lot of the folks that we work with for in-vehicle uh, have this exact question about whether or not Helix is um, cellular capable, because I know that, that that connectivity is really important. Absolutely. Yes, it, it is. Uh, in addition to the dual Ethernet ports that both systems have, uh, both are also uh, able to offer Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity, as well as 4G modems. And there will certainly be more you know, mobile uh, connectivity options coming out as, as time goes on. Nice. So it's, it's really about maintaining that connectivity and allowing those digital conversations to keep happening regardless of where the system is installed. Exactly. Great. So um, another shout out. Thank you to Christopher, who also says the products look great. I mean, I, you know, please feel free to make JP and I jealous as you re reference Helix. Uh, that's totally acceptable. I think everyone can agree that Helix is the best looking thing on the stream today. Uh, so thank you for that, for all of those uh, shout outs. Um, Oh, certifications. So somebody had, was saying that, you know, my, my application requires a lot of different certifications. Can you talk to me whether or not uh, Helix is certified or what certifications have, it has gone through? Uh, absolutely. Again, this is something where, you know, project basis might require certain specific certifications. And I'd encourage anybody who has those questions also to reach out to our sales team for help kind of figuring out the best fit uh, and what, what requirements might uh, meet their needs. Um, but as for Helix, we currently have a UL certification underway and UL listed configurations will be available shortly. Uh, additionally, these systems have both passed CE and FCC testing, as well as uh, additional immunity to be EMC medical ready. Now we say medical ready because often the customer with the medical end use would still be expected to perform uh, the testing for their specific configuration in that specific application. Yeah, makes sense. Great. So um, getting kind of further onto that point, somebody was curious, and I, I understand why this question comes up, but someone was actually curious, uh, is this thing available now? Can I, can I buy a Helix system right now? Yeah, that is a great question, and I understand why someone would want to know that detail. Uh, absolutely. Both systems are available for purchase on our website at onlogic.com. Um, more options are going to be coming online, including additional GPU choices. Those will be in stock shortly, and our sales team can certainly help secure early availability. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and we always invite folks to reach out to us on chat or via email and, and talk about the project. You know, we want to be able to help people solve a problem, uh, not just buy hardware. So please feel free to reach out to us if you're working on something that you think could benefit from Helix. Uh, let's see. Oh, someone was curious if we're going to do more of these live events. Is this something that we uh, intend to do? Um, I can certainly speak to that. Absolutely. So I want to invite anybody who uh, is watching today or who might be watching this back in, in the recorded format. Um, let us know what you want to hear about for On Logic Live. Let us know what we can talk about. Um, JP and I are happy to do this show uh, from time to time, but we can also bring in other expert, experts from the team here to talk about really any subject you, you care about, whether it's Industry 4.0 or building a solution. Um, love to get you know other partners on here as well to talk about solutions. So let us know what we could do in a future On Logic Live event. Uh, we'd love to be part of that. I don't want to speak for JP, but I would certainly be fine with that. Absolutely. On this, we agree. <laughs> uh, and one of those questions I just sort of brought up that, uh, that is something that we can certainly touch on now, what really is Industry 4.0? When we talk about Industry 4.0 here um, or IIoT, you know, what do we mean by that? Um, what do you think, JP? What comes to mind when you think of Industry 4.0? First of all, that is a, that's a big question and a, and a good one, certainly. You know, Industry 4.0 is really the term that we use to describe sort of what's known as the fourth industrial revolution. When you think about uh, the advent of technology and how this has marched on and how it's become more pervasive in our lives, you know, we talked about earlier, I think we mentioned the, uh, the rising need for automation in all these different sectors, really uh, creating an ecosystem of machine-to-machine -machine communication that's really going to be enabling so much more in our day-to-day -day lives. Absolutely. Yeah, that connectivity is, is really something that we're seeing more and more necessary in any modern uh, production opportunity that we're seeing out there. We're going to have some more content about that coming up. I want to invite everybody to check out the IO Hub uh, on, on Logic. That's our blog. We'll definitely have some more things coming soon about Industry 4.0, talking about rugged, talking about industrial. That's the place where we really spend a lot of our time trying to shed light on these things. And again, we're always looking for that feedback from uh, readers and viewers about what we could discuss. Uh, so let's see if there's anything else coming in. That looks like the stream of questions at the moment. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for tuning in with us today for On Logic Live. Uh, again, this is the first of what we hope will be a bunch of these events. So please let us know what you'd like to hear about. 
Um, and we'd love your feedback on what we can do better and how we could be expressing, uh, you know, the thoughts and feelings about these, th these subjects more effectively to you. So how do you want to hear from us and what do you want to hear about? If you want to know more about Helix, obviously you can visit our website uh, onlogic.com. Feel free to chat with us on that website. Give us an email, info at onlogic.com. We'd be happy to answer any and all questions that you might have. And we hope you'll join us for our next OnLogic Live event. JP, thank you. And thank you everybody for joining us today. Absolutely. Thanks, folks.